Hello and welcome to Interspace Labs. My name is Stephen Ball and in this video we're going to be looking at stored procedures. Now before we start there's a couple of very useful links on the screen. Um, first off docs.embarcadero.com. If you visit that site you'll be able to find the Interbase product and under there if you have a look at the language reference guide there's a whole load of language reference um, goodness to read up on there um, that will help with some of the more advanced features of using stored procedures. Um, this video is very much a, a quick introduction to just get you going. Also a very very good article um, that's been around for a while is on EDN which is the Embarcadero Developer Network. Um, so if you go to edn.embarcadero.com forward slash article forward slash 27197 and that article is by Bill Todd and takes you over a host of things to do with stored procedures and also to do with triggers where there's a lot of commonality between the, the language and setup. So why should you use stored procedures? Well, the great thing about a stored procedure is that it will reduce the amount of network traffic that you have on the, on the WAN um, when you're running a select statement, then you're obviously bringing all those values back to your client. You're then doing some loop through them, you're checking for stuff, you're then passing things back to the server, asking for the next bit and so on. That's a lot of traffic over the network. Where with stored procedures, you can collate that business logic up and process it on the server side to then only have one request with one fetch going on. Now the other thing with stored procedures is they are faster because they're pre-optimized. When you go and create a statement and run it across the network, it's got to take that SQL statement, that statement then has got to be passed, it's then got to be submitted to the query optimizer and analyzed, and then it's got to be formulated as an expression um, with a plan to go with it. Now all that work is pre-done when you use stored procedures. All it's doing is taking the values and running it against that pre-optimized um, plan that's in the database. So they are slightly faster. Also, stored procedures offers a chance to have centralized logic. So if we have, for example, a method that we want to use to delete a salesperson, you may want to check to see if they've got any pre-existing sales orders that are open now you don't want to be able to delete a salesperson if they have I don't know, sales quotes that are outstanding. Um, you may want to have to make sure that they're reassigned to somebody else first. So that gives you the option to be able to make sure that you can, as we've seen in other tutorials, raise an exception to say, um, no, this person can't be removed because of X, Y, and Z. Now also if you have multiple applications connecting into the database then it gives you a chance to be able to control at the database level that processing which is very useful. Now finally stored procedures give us an additional level of user security. So you may want to be able to for example find out something from a table that contains information about salaries within a stored procedure. But you don't want to give each user complete access to that table. So what you can do is you can give the stored procedure access to read that table and then it, you can give the user access to access the stored procedure and then all of a sudden the user can then find out the part of information that they need to query against through the stored procedure without having to actually physically be able to do it themselves because the stored procedure takes care of that. Now before we jump into IB Console and go and explore some stored procedures let's just have a quick look at the structure of a stored procedure. So here we've got a, a statement that will create a stored procedure that is called get new ID. Now in here we've got a couple of parameters that are being passed in 
Um, one's a site and one's a table. Now, this is uh, an example that you could use if you were, um, say, replicating data across multiple sites and you wanted to make sure that you always got a unique key from each individual database. So maybe you have uh, an IB Lite edition on a portable device and you want to be able to create a whole load of records and then push them back to a central database. So you want to be able to make sure that each um, site or um, of entry has its own uh, unique ID that's always going to be unique. So here we can say let's create a site ID and we'll pass that in and you may want to have uh, a table code so you know which table they've come from uh, if you're inspecting the IDs uh, when you've got a big long list of them. Um, this is kind of useful if you're not using a, a table underscore ID as a, a naming convention. And what it's going to do is it's going to return back a 20 character new ID value. And all it's doing here is it's taking the site integer, it's taking the table code, and it's getting the next ID. And it's then going to link those together and pass them back. So to call this method, all you need to do is in code just write execute procedure and then the procedure name and pass the properties in. Now if you're using um, Delphi or C++ Builder then you can uh, use a stored procedure component and set the parameters up and you'll be able to call the parameters by the name that you define here. Okay, so there we can see the unique sections within there for the parameters going in, the returns part, the as, which you can then declare some local variables in, and we'll have a look at some examples of those in a moment, and then the actual code for the actual method itself. Okay, so let's get into IB Console. Okay, so I'm going to jump into my employee database here. Now the employee database is one of the sample databases that comes with Interbase and with the developer edition you'll be able to find those. So let's um, come down to the stored procedures and we can see we have a number of procedures here. And let's start off with the um, procedure for get employees projects. So here we can see there's a couple of parameters, an employee number which is a small integer as an input and then there's an output which is a project ID. Now the metadata for this, again we can see the create which creates the, the blank stub and then the auto that puts all the business logic in. Um, the reason we have both in here is in case there's a reliance against any of the code that's going to be within the main body when you're creating a blank database and using the metadata it allows it to create the areas and then uh, the auto scripts run at the end to insert all the, the business logic. Okay, so we have um, we don't have any parameters being set up in here. We can see this is very similar to the one that we've just had. But here we're doing for select project ID. So we're selecting the, um, the project ID um, from the employee projects table. So we're selecting a field from the employees projects table where the employee number and then we're using a parameterized query here so we've got a full colon which is picking up the employee number so that's going to give us a list of the project IDs for a specific employee and we're then able to pass those into the project ID that's the return using this for select do statement and then that's going to suspend. That will then pick up and uh, add each one in. So that's kind of our, our loop through the data. So let's go ahead and I know we've got employee number four has some data on them. So if we do select star from and then just get employee project, get underscore emp underscore proj. Ah, 
I'm getting a promise mismatch and I need to pass in my input query. So there we are, employee number four, and we can see the project IDs that have come back. Uh, if we run this for employee number two, he has no projects. Um, so we could uh, go and get a list of employees and, and run that out and then play with this some more, but you get the idea. So let's have a look at uh, another one here. This uh, org chart is another stored procedure. And we can see here that after the as, it's got some declared variables here. So it's got a declared variable called manager number, and that's an integer. And it's got also another declared variable, DNO, as a char. So first off here, we're going to select um, it's got a, a join going on, so it's actually joining to the same table. Uh, it's going to join. It's going to select the, um, the department for the, the header department, the department, the manager number, and the department number. And it's going to outer join the departments on the head department equals the head department uh, or the department number. So you can find out who the head department is, and that will then give us the head department. And it's going to order them by the department number. And it's going to then insert that data into head department, department, manager number, and DNO. So it's going to do that, and then it's going to begin. So whereas before we had the suspend, which just returned the records back, we're then going to do some business logic here before we call the suspend. So we're going to say if the manager number is null, then set the manager number to be this string value and set the title to be blank. Otherwise, select the full name and the job code from the employee table where the employee number is that of the manager number. So here we're able to use a parameter and pass the manager number as the parameter value in. So that's where we're using this local value here, which is being set into here. And then we're then taking the values of this and passing those into the manager name and the title. So that's now picking up the head department, the department, and then here we're, we're putting the two values into local variables, which we're then setting a little bit further down. And then the employee count, we're just doing select count from employee where the department number equals the department number that's been passed in uh, and passing that into this value here is the output. We then call the suspend, which is then going to set those values and return it back. And then we can go on to do the next one here with the for select. OK, so let's go and have a look at that running. So if we do select star from org chart, now you'll notice that the, uh, the org chart here all of these are output um, values, there's no input there, so we don't need to pass anything in. So we can just hit execute here. And that's going to return back our data. Now, finally, let's just um, order by head department here. And now we can see our head departments, our departments within the head department the managers, what their title is, and how many employees they have reporting. So this is kind of a, a bit more of a smart view or an intelligent view, um, as uh, one of my colleagues likes to call them. So great, we're able to use stored procedures to actually go select everything out with the data that we want. And you can see here, there's a number of select statements that we'd have to be running um, across the network for each one of these um, records if we wanted to get that working uh, as a full um, one-off view. Now, in terms of um, calling stored procedures from within stored procedures, um, you can do that. Here we've got one that's um, selecting languages from show langs which is uh, got then the premises being passed in so this is calling 
another stored procedure to go pass in the values that it's got here currently and returning that back uh, and then here we've actually this is quite fun where it goes and um, creates a line of dashes as record um, and then suspends that so you can go generate dynamic data with the suspend um, to bring bits back so if we go ahead and do select star from all langs you can see here we actually get a row back that actually includes that separator which is kind of um, kind of fun now I'm just going to jump back into the org charts here and let's have a look at the metadata um, literally if you ever want to alter a stored procedure just open it up view the metadata tab copy the metadata that's here um, copy and uh, well in fact let's just copy this here and I'm just going to paste that in and I'm just going to copy the set term at the bottom move that right to the top paste that in and then just swap these two around so set term is used to set the terminator uh, for an SQL statement now because we use the semicolons within stored procedures you may need to just kind of uh, use the set term to be able to create and alter stored procedures here but then we could just come in here and we can then start kind of um, we could say actually make this to be C uh, to be confirmed I'm not quite sure what TBH means or well, it's not relevant so let's just change that um, and then you can go ahead we could run that and that's now gone ahead and changed um, and the org chart will now have TBC in there so it's very easy to go and modify them just using kind of use IB console and get into the alter statement that's already there uh, as a stub for you to use. Now there's one last type of statement that you can run that I just want to draw your attention to and this was introduced uh, reasonably recently in XE um, version of Interbase and what it allows you to do is dynamically create a statement that you can execute through a stored procedure so for example you could create a procedure um, you could have a procedure here for example that has got some declared variables and you go find the maximum uh, so this is getting the highest employee number from the employee table and inserting it into employee no which is our lo local declared variable here and then we're using this variable here to generate a statement that we're going to execute so we can say execute procedure and then a procedure name which has been passed in and then we're executing that against a specific employee number which is the one that we've just picked up and then you can say execute statement and then the execute statement so this is um, again if you have a look in the, the readme documents um, on uh, on the docs on uh, docs.embarcadero.com uh, you'll be able to see that in the update for a bit anyway I hope that's been really useful as a quick introduction to stored procedures um, they are very very powerful and you know they really do help reduce network traffic help make uh, your statements run more optimized can really consolidate centralized data and can really help in terms of um, providing additional options around user security if you need to again I really do recommend you have a read through the EDN article and also visit the docs.embarcadero.com to have a look at the language reference guide